Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today we're going to be going over the basics of what the AI does in general situations. So like literally I'm going to be talking about what what kind of things does the AI default to, such as targeting of units. So when there's multiple targets, what is it going to go after? Do fighters choose targets on their own? Uh, things of this nature. So what is the AI doing when you are not directly controlling your guys? What kind of decisions is it going to default to? And what can you expect the AI to choose for you? If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button and subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content. Let's dive right in. So the first thing to talk about here is what tanks will target when they have multiple targets to, to choose from. So we can see here we have a tank and a transport driving by here, and both the AT bunker and my tiger are both firing at this tank. So AP, when, we, when we're talking about units with AP damage, they will always choose whatever unit has the highest armor value. So tanks will always default, and AT guns and such, will always default to whatever unit has the highest defend, uh, armor value in front of them. Uh, because it just kind of like is assumed that that is the most dangerous thing in front of them. So it's really important to understand that if you drive, you know, say a Panzer and a Tiger up to a location, the enemy is going to default target the Tiger and not the Panzer, okay? Even though the Panzer would be much easier to kill, and we all know that, the computer just assumes whatever is the most dangerous thing is the thing that needs to be attacked first. So it's really important that you remember this because in those situations, you're going to need to micro your, um, you're gonna need to micro your armor to target the not heaviest thing. So if you like you want your unit to hit something heavier. Now another option is to put your unit on a fission shot, which means it'll only fire at units that it has a certain percentage chance to penetrate. The danger of this though is, you know, they may just not fire at anything at times then. You know, if they have a low chance of penetrating something, it could be really hard to actually have them shoot stuff. And sometimes it might just be better for them to shoot even if it's not a great target at all. But that's just something to be aware of. So, you know, when you have tons of different targets, they're always going to default to the higher armor stuff. So if you want your unit to kill, say, a transport that's driving by, or, you know, you want a unit to, a tank has an AP target and an HE target, it's always going to default to the AP target over the HE target. Um, so if you want your, if you want a tank to, for some reason, shoot at an infantry unit, so say maybe a Panzerfaust or something, or a Strike is trying to sneak up on your guy, and you're like, you know, you know, it's got one health, and maybe you, 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 you feel like your tank could probably kill it if it just shot at that, you know, shot at that Panzerfaust, then you'd have to manually target. Now, remember, tanks do have machine guns and stuff, so the tank will automatically fire machine guns at the infantry, and, if possible, and, you know, heavier rounds at the tanks. So that, that's how tank tank combat works with your AI. It's going to automatically choose the most dangerous thing it is in front of it and it considers generally whatever has the highest armor to be the most dangerous thing. So the next thing we're going to go over here is infantry targeting. So what are your infantry going to default target when they have multiple targets from? So right now my MG42, we're going to consider this an infantry unit because it functions the same as one. Uh, and, you know, we can also look at these these MG42s, you know, basically any like infantry driven weapon here that's not targeting tanks or something like that. So when infantry have multiple targets, specifically infantry targets, okay, or guns or any, any again, anything that they can kill with their small arms. They are going to automatically default to whatever has the low the lowest amount of suppression already on them. So in this case, this MG42 bunker can fire at either the Avtos or the Razvedka here. It's going to default fire at this Razvedka because it the Avtos are already pinned down. So if I unpause here, you'll see this is getting immediately pinned down because the MGs were targeting that Razvedka automatically instead of the Avtos. Now that there's no other target, both MGs will now target that pin down avto so that's really important to understand too because this is how you lose a lot of infantry combat so the problem is when you have one infantry unit and there are there is more than one in, uh, enemy infantry unit coming at you okay so you have two enemy infantry squads coming at your one infantry squad your infantry squad is going to automatically alternate which squad it targets 
based on whichever one has the current lowest amount of suppression here. Okay, and now the thing is tanks will do that as well. So like if they have HE shells here, it's going to auto target whatever has the lowest amount of suppression first before it targets anything else. So it's really important that you're careful with that. So a lot of times when you have the option to shoot at two different infantry squads, you really actually need to pick one for the for the unit because otherwise they're just going to alternate. So watch this. So this machine gun's going to shoot this for a little bit till it gets kind of pinned down. And now it's going to change. You see how it just changed targets to this other after this other machine gun's firing at that avto. So it's it automatically changed target to this and now it's changing to this avto here. So we can see that it's not pinning down any of these infantry units. Instead, it's just firing at whatever is the least suppressed one. So this is how you can very easily lose some lose a combat that you should win. So like this MG34 could easily pin one of these each one of these down one at a time. It's not going to do that though. It's going to all constantly alternate between the three picking whichever one has the lowest suppression allowing the other aftos to get closer so it's really important when you are being attacked by multiple infantry squads or multiple whatever you know in generally things that can get suppressed that you actually target one of those infantry squads you know as long as that's what you want it to do right I, if you want it to alternate that's fine i guess but most of the time that's gonna like significantly slow down the pinning process and allow the enemy infantry to get close to you or do whatever they were trying to do in the first place kill your infantry most likely so it's really important that you actually choose one so that they will actually target and then kill them so that's how infantry targeting works it always chooses whatever the lowest suppression is and it's very dangerous because then you know it will they never actually suppress anything your single infantry that's why single infantry units often lose against doubles is because they don't do enough damage to either they never suppress any of the infantry and then they get suppressed and die another default uh, for tanks to understand the ai will always choose to fire ap rounds over he rounds so whenever like there's two different targets say an infantry target and a tank target so it has something with for its ap shells and something so you can see it's firing at this mortar and now it just changed to fire at these car these transports instead because it's always going to default to shooting armored stuff over shooting soft targets so you watch it's going to shoot this dzh ip it tried to uh, obviously it died before it got there but it's going to fire at the dzihp before it fires at the sg43 Okay, so this is very important to understand that tanks and AT guns and, you know, all these things technically designed to kill armored targets are going to default fire at armored tar targets instead of firing at soft targets. So if you want them to fire at a soft target instead for some reason, you need to manually tell them to do that. So let's talk about fighters and how they work in the air. So usually speaking, you can just kind of auto tell, you know, I, I could click on that and tell it to go after that. Fighters will automatically go after planes that appear in the air. So you notice I'm not telling him to go after this plane. I just clicked it to move here, and now the the fucking wolf if, is going after that. Now the problem is here, you can see, it doesn't make good choices. It's going to choose whatever the first plane is that it f saw, and continue to go after that plane until it kills it. So even though that fighter gone on my back very easily, okay, if I call on another one here, he will fly he will do nothing until he reaches whatever target you gave him so i'm gonna have him go here and now he is done doing his thing and now he will automatically chase after whatever the closest plane is to him and he will continue to chase this plane until he kills it so it's very important that if something comes after it that you retarget now usually with your fighters you just want to target something you do not want to allow it to do this sort of thing but you know especially when you're playing in um you know single player and you might have like 20 planes flying around or something there's no way you're going to micromanage all of them so you can just kind of have them hover around the computer's lines to chase down planes like this okay and you know it will automatically target other planes so you don't actually need to manually target every single plane it will auto target and go after things itself just really dumbly it will not prioritize anything specifically so be careful next thing i want to talk about is bomber targeting so i had a katusha targeted over here i like click to attack it now how does it work what does the ai do when it loses sight of the unit all right it's important to understand this so we're going to watch this junkers go in here it's going to bomb. This is where I told it to bomb. And it's going to bomb on exactly the target where it was when it was last seen. So the AI is going to automatically continue to target the ground or whatever spot 
it last saw the target that I gave it. So it's really important that you understand that. So if the target's like in motion and you lose sight of it here, they're gonna bomb it right there. So if you want to, so if you want them to to actually try to shoot where they're gonna be, you're gonna have to redirect it to target it in a new location so that they the bomber actually has a chance of hitting what it's supposed to hit. So that's something to be aware of. The AI just base goes after whatever spot you had originally targeted the moment before it died. So be very careful with that. A lot of times it's better actually just to hit T, which is attack ground, and have the unit attack a singular spot on the ground. Uh, this way you you know it's going to happen because it's there's certain planes too that just won't attack um for example rocket planes oftentimes will not fire their rockets if they lose sight of their target which is so right here i'm just going to do an attack round because i know that thing is there um you know and i probably will just see now i lost sight of it of this mortar so now it's very possible that my ju-87 might even miss Especially now that it's suppressed. Remember, bombers that are suppressed are less accurate. And therefore will kill far less consistently. Also, note that the little red thing. This little red targeting reticle or whatever line. Uh, does not accurately portray where it's going to drop its bombs. So, like, when you lose sight of something, this little red line could be anywhere, basically. Now, another thing I want to talk about is transport. So, when your transports come and drop your whatever off for the majority of the time they just disappear right so if you have a free any free transport will simply disappear the moment it is the, the moment you drop your troops off right one thing to note though is that your transport has to come to a complete stop in order to actually drop the troops off uh, this is something that you need to make sure you're ready for uh, and that's why you kind of have to predict you know, before the opponent can kill your tanks and such, or your transports, excuse me, you have to be ready to unload them early because the, the, the transport has to come to a complete stop in order to actually unload, which is why a lot of units die in the transports because, again, they haven't been unloaded early enough and they die before you're unloaded. In terms of, no like, paid for transports, so if you have a transport that costs points, munition transports or whatever those will literally just sit wherever you unloaded them so they will not like move on their own they won't go somewhere new it's very important that you like so like if you have an artillery piece i don't have any here but if you have a heavy artillery piece that has an actual transport so this is a free transport so it'll disappear like all the others um you know if you have like a munitions or something it will just sit right next to whatever it unloaded. It doesn't move away. It doesn't back away. If you want to re-pick them up, so if you want to pick up that same stuff to transport again, all you have to do is click the the unit to and click on the transport, and they'll walk back to it and re-hook up. So the last AI thing I want to talk about here is infantry in buildings, okay, and how this works exactly. So when you tell an infantry unit to leave a building, it is going to leave an exit in whichever direction that you told it to leave an exit. So if you tell it to leave that way, it's going to come out of the building this way. If you tell it to leave this way, it's, go it's going to exit in whatever direction that you have told it to leave. And remember that the buildings themselves are the things they're actually going to. So like it shows you this nice big square. And, and really that's just to make it easier to click on. They are walking to this building here. So we're going to watch them walk to the actual building here and then they'll go in there they go so they are technically in this building specifically they're not over here in the corner so when they exit this building it's very important to know sorry getting distracted it's very important to know that there's still space now if you just click in the square they're still going to stay in like they're still considered in the building but when I actually move them out they're actually standing over here like this is open ground that they can get shot at and you'll notice that the line of sight changes too like that building exerts line of sight blocking okay and as they move here now the whole like the the fence and everything so th these are things to be aware of when jumping in and out of buildings um, you know that it, they're actually going to the building whatever it, you know if it's a complex like this with multiple buildings they're technically going to any of these four here that any of these two here you know any of them work you know when you see this one over here they're probably going to the biggest one 
you know, whichever building is the biggest in the little grouping of them. It's all considered one building, but the buildings themselves are like physical objects that they have to get to. The yards, you know, they have this whole square, you know, this one here. That's a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of real estate here. But the truth is only this bit. They have to actually get to this building. Now you can turn now whenever troops are just standing next to cover like this. So the AI will automatically try to put them in cover. So if we watch here, he'll stand for a moment. And now he's automatically going to try to go into the nearest heavier cover. And there they go. If you want to turn this option off, you can. There's an option in the option menu to stop the auto cover thing. I would strongly suggest you do not turn this off unless you're a very good player and you are ready to micro absolutely everything. Do not turn this off. It will save you way more often than it will hurt you. There are some situations where you don't want your infantry to automatically hop into buildings and stuff. So say, I want them to hide over here within this block line of sight and I don't want them to go into this line of sight where they can be seen. Well, the auto cover is going to jump them into that line of sight and that's going to suck because I don't want them there. But that doesn't come up super often and it comes up way more often that you've forgotten about your troops and they're just standing out in the middle of the open and get absolutely melted because they're in to no to cover whatsoever. So remember the AI is always going to move your troops. It's not going to like cross everything. So like if I put these dudes way out here in the middle of nowhere, actually let's just do this guy instead so I don't have to wait so long. If I move far enough away from cover they will not they're, they're not going to like trek across a whole plane to find their own cover on their own it's only when it's convenient and when it's nearby so when i put them like out in the middle of, of, of everything here they'll stop and they'll just stand there see like there's no immediate cover like in their general vicinity it, and it's a very small range i think it's like within 50 meters of them i think it, it might even be smaller might be 30 meters i'm not even sure um it, it's a very tight window so that auto cover thing and it works for woods too like if i move this guy into this yellow woods here okay he will automatically walk back into this green woods so just be careful when you're positioning something like an at gun or something because at guns do it too like they, everything does it except tanks tanks do not auto cover um but everything else all infantry based things do be aware this totally messes with your line of sight. So if you're trying to get like a line of sight here, he probably will walk back into the green and lose the line of sight you had tried to set up. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of the AI preferences in Steel Division 2, and that it helps you make better choices in your games. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button and subscribe, and have a fantastic day.